Hi, and welcome to Mind Shifters Radio. I'm your host, Tim Hayes, for the first hour today. Michael and Jeannie Rice will be here for the second hour, beginning at noon central time. Today is Thursday, March 14th, 2019. I'm uh, privileged to be here, and I thank you all for being here, whether you're on the show live on the switchboard now, or you're listening to your computer, or you're catching the show on the archives. We appreciate everybody who donates their time to this project. The project is helping me make my life a better life, helping you make your life a better life, learning tools and then practicing and gaining in support and practicing so that I can apply tools to improve the quality of my life one application of a tool at a time, one worksheet at a time, one breath session at a time, one targeted journaling session at a time. Every time I pick up a tool and apply it to my life, triggered by the fact that I was not feeling total peace, total calm, total compassion, totally loving energy. Every time I apply a tool, I gain benefit. It isn't always a powerful, dramatic benefit. Sometimes it's just a subtle shift in my energy. Sometimes it's quite a powerful shift in my energy. Sometimes that powerful shift in my energy is accompanied by a dramatic insight. We are here to make available to people and teach people the use of tools available at www.whyagain.org, whyagain.org. And if you go to that page and click on either the Start Here button or the red and white bullseye, It'll take you to a page where you can have access to some of the most powerful, effective, and efficient tools I've learned in my 44 and a half years of doing therapy that can help you transform your relationships. By way of example, I started talking yesterday about how Tuesday was a very full day. I, 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 my term for it is blessedly busy. And in the middle of the day Tuesday, I had some things happen that resonated very strong energies in me. And there was something about the interpretation I threw on these events and what it resonated in me that left me with a sick feeling in the pit of my stomach and a very powerful pattern of recurring negative thoughts that was quite distracting. I had to put quite a bit of mental energy to the task of staying focused for the rest of the day, all the way through Tuesday afternoon, Tuesday evening support group. I did a little bit of work after the support group. I talked a little bit about it. I had a little bit of shift by the time we did the internet show yesterday. Yesterday was another very full day, lots of powerful sessions, and so my work was postponed until after I got home. And I got home last night, and I still had a very heavy, very sick feeling in my stomach, right at the edge of nausea. And I've had access to these tools long enough to know that unless I pick up the tools and use them, that energy will either continue as a major distraction and a discomfort at a conscious level, or I'll find a way to bury it at an unconscious level and it will continue to be a disruption for me. So I pulled out the app, which is one of the tools that's available for free. If you go to your app store or the Google Play store and you type in Heartland Aramaic Forgiveness, H-E-A-R-T-L-A-N-D, Aramaic, A-R-A-M-A-I-C, Forgiveness. You can download an app, completely free and completely private, that will let you do what I did. 
And so <clears throat> I opened up the app as soon as I got into bed and I said, I'm going to fill out these blanks and I'm going to keep my breath moving and I'm going to accept the shifts in energy. Perhaps the discomfort gets even worse. We had somebody call yesterday and said, yeah, I did a worksheet and I'm even more mad than when I started. And I say, well, that's probably an indication of a success because it's probably removed some barriers to me seeing some of my deeper pain that I wasn't even aware was there when I started the worksheet process. So I did a worksheet and it resulted in a shift, not a dramatic shift, but a little bit more comfort and I was able to get to sleep. And then I was awake at 1.30 in the morning thinking rather obsessively about the thoughts that were there when I awoke and about the events of Tuesday afternoon. So I picked up the phone, put on my glasses, and filled out another worksheet. In this case, I only got, I mean, there are seven steps in the worksheet process. And in this case, I got into the second step and the tears came and, and a powerful image came to my mind of an event that happened a full, oh, let's say um, 47 years ago. A powerful event that happened uh, maybe only 45 years ago. So I kept my breath moving. I let the tears come before I went on to the rest of the worksheet. And I noticed by the time I had finished the entire worksheet that the sick feeling, the very heavy feeling in my stomach was down to about oh, a fourth or a tenth, whatever. I don't know how to judge those things, but it was nowhere near as intense. And so I stayed awake for long enough to do another worksheet and do a little bit of journaling and I got back to sleep. And I woke up this morning with the thoughts coming out of a dream that were directly related to the worksheet. And so I made note about it before I got out of bed. And then I carved out the time when I got to work to do a half an hour or 45 minutes of writing came out in, in, in the turbulence of thoughts and flooding and emotions and connecting it to an event 40-some years ago. That's why we do this work. Right now, as I sit here, I have energy moving, but there's no nausea in my stomach. There's no sick feeling in the pit of my stomach. There's no heavy weight in my chest or my stomach. And yet nothing has changed about what happened on Tuesday that was the impetus for me to choose the interpretation that was connected to all of that upsetting energy in me, all of those intense negative emotions, etc. We offer this tool for free. Michael and Jeannie Rice have put together a web page that's got more powerful, useful stuff on it and interesting stuff than you'll probably get to in the next 10 years if you dig in start right now. And the vast majority of it's free. We encourage people, if you get benefit from this work, to donate to Michael and Jeannie because while they've made a commitment to make these tools available to every mind, heart, and being on the planet, even if those people don't have the money to pay for it, Michael and Jeannie haven't figured out how to do it for free. So it's costing them money to host this internet show. It's costing them money to build the app. All right. So the area code is 563-999-3581. And if you press 1, 
I'll click your number and uh, and it'll be in the air. <laughs> so uh, if nobody raises a hand, I'm going to have to go right back to the processing. I'd made some notes in the middle of the night that uh, I would say, okay, we're going to take you on a journey. I'm going to I'm going to share the experience to the best of my ability to kind of draw this roadmap for how this happened for me. I have made this commitment to what to give to commit to put a tremendous amount of time and finances and effort into a project and the goal of the project is of a bigger scope than any project I've taken on in my life before and the point of it is to to create a broader awareness of these tools what Michael and Jeannie have made available on their website the power of these tools the accessibility of these tools the efficiency of these tools to help me change my negative emotions to use them as a warning signal to improve the quality of my life to improve the quality of my relationships and I've been building into that until last summer when it it dawned on me that what I had been doing to make that happen just wasn't producing results. So I invested a significant amount of money to engage a mentor, coach, guide, expert, what have you. And on Tuesday, in the middle of the afternoon, right between two sessions with patients, it was revealed to me without beyond any shadow of a doubt that this person cannot do for me what we had planned for him to do for me. And that basically, as the line from Blazing Saddles says, the minister says, says to the new sheriff, son, you're on your own. <laughs> and in the moment where that became obvious to me, I felt this heavy weight and sick feeling in the pit of my stomach. So I gratefully, after after years of working with tools like this and having my own therapy and all kinds of other things, I had the ability to step back with my conscious logical mind and gently ask myself, how am I doing this? And put it on hold and refuse to act from that, refuse to panic. As I said yesterday, um, if I hadn't had these tools, the sensations in my body, the sick feeling in my stomach were so intense that I probably 20 years ago would have gone to a doctor or an emergency room. But I, I know better than that. I, I, and I, I was able to have enough of my mental awareness observing that, oh, this really unexpected thing just happened and reveals to you something very important. And then instantaneously with that, here comes a sick feeling in the pit of your stomach. So, so as I said, when I got to, I got through the day yesterday, knowing, feeling that heavy, sick feeling and I managed to use the breath work that I teach people and use my knowledge of the acupuncture meridians to do a little bit of tapping and finger rubbing and breathing between sessions. And I got through the, the day and that sick feeling was still there. So when I got home, I filled out a worksheet. And so here's what the worksheet looked like. I filled it out on the app, which I'm very grateful for this, the ready accessibility. I can do this laying on my back in the bed. I don't have to have the pen or the paper. I, you know, I can't tell you how many times I've 
had my pen go through the the paper on a worksheet when I'm trying to do them in bed, sitting up on an elbow. So it's very, very convenient for me to have this on my phone. So thank you again, Jeannie Rice. Again, you can go to your app store and type in the words Heartland Aramaic Forgiveness and download it for free. So here's the worksheet. The premise of this worksheet is my essential nature as a human life, my very being is the energy of creation, the energy of love. The goal of this internal forgiveness wake-up sheet is to empower me to remove fear and any hostility so that I can return my awareness to the direct experience of my true nature as this energy of creation. 24 hours a day, seven days a week, all year long. And then number 1A says, I, Tim, who am this energy of love, am experiencing, and I wrote, sick feeling in my stomach, it feels like fear. So use a separate worksheet for each emotion. Remember that hostility and fear always tell me my mind is off the mark. It comes from corrupt data. And then I name the topic of my uh, uh, of attention, the focus of my attention. So the focus of my attention was this person that I wanted to be my mentor. And what I wrote happened is he blew it on the coaching call. So I took a breath and I coached on, by the worksheet to remember that if he's the one with the problem, why am I the one with the pain? So I did another breath and I read how it. the app tells me The truth is only my thoughts cause my emotional upset. So I took another breath and I filled in the thought that came to mind that's associated with my fear and that knot in my stomach. The thought I came up with was I have to start all over with my project. Then I took a breath and looked at the punishment thoughts. The punishment thought was I want to punish the mentor by letting everybody know that he's no good, telling people. And I'm punishing myself by generating this feeling of panic. So then I took another breath, and the worksheet on the app reminds me to release and surrender the sick feeling in my stomach and the thoughts about the coaching call and my need to punish somebody by telling people and my need to punish myself by generating panic. And then it says, it coaches me to cancel my need to be right and cancel my need to make up another story out of these brain cells about my past experiences and my thoughts about them to try and prove to me, to hallucinate the proof that my fear and hostility-based reality is true. And then it's, it asks me to choose to love truth and willingly face and process out all of the disease producing energies for and from all of my relations and all my generations. And then it asks me if I'm willing to go through the physical, mental, and emotional symptoms of healing. And at this point, I thought, yeah, this sick feeling could get even worse, or I could get actually nauseous and have to throw up. I could get a headache. One of the last times I did a powerful worksheet like this, it generated the energy moving through me, generated the pain I I would have labeled a migraine. So I said, yes, I'm willing to go through that. And then number five says, when I'm upset, my perception's built out of corrupt data. And the thing that drives my mind to use that particular data is my goal for this mentor to be powerful to be a powerful, positive agent for change in my life. This perception is a limiting picture constructed at a maximum of nine bits of data during the period of time at least 10,000 brain cells are firing in my brain and probably 20 trillion bits of data are hitting my senses. So it's an extraordinarily tiny fragment of the truth of what is. So by canceling my goal, my replicate mind's reality collapses and gives me a direct contact with the denied, dissociated, and projected parts of my carbon-based memory. The carbon-based memory simply means the brain in my head that functions like a computer hard drive. It can only receive the things I type in and spit them back out. That part of my mind is 
frequently projecting and blaming others for its content. So while I hold love, conscious, active, and present in my mind, I now choose to collapse my mind's lies by willingly canceling my goal for my mentor to be a powerful, positive agent for change in my life. And then it goes on to ask me to invite something other than my conscious, logical mind to assist me. And I chose here the elemental force specific for humans that's there to break off the effects of my errors in thought and guide me to truth and happiness if I just ask it to. We all have this. We all have a connection to a higher intuition. In some of us, it's more or less developed than in others, and yet it's there for everybody. And it's possible to strengthen it wherever I am on my journey. So I ask that force, that elemental force, to restore me to my newborn essence of love, to incline me toward healing, to help me open a direct conscious relationship with and gently remove the denied and dissociated and the projected parts of my carbon-based memory. And I breathe and I tap into those loving thoughts that I mentioned earlier. And then I just gently repeated that I cancel my need to be right. I cancel my need for anyone or anything else to change. I specifically cancel my goal in this worksheet. I put my conscious logical mind aside. I refuse the temptation to try and figure it out and ask to be shown. And just I laid there and just watched what came up. And soon after the second, maybe third repetition of I cancel my need to be right, I got a very clear image of myself as a 14-year-old between high school or grade school and high school, maybe 15 years old, and I had agreed to repaint a very long white picket fence. And I was out in the summer heat while all my friends were away playing with a wire brush and a paint scraper at the impossible, eternally long, never-to-be-finished, completely ungrateful task of stripping thick white paint off of a long, did I mention it was long? Long white picket fence. The bottom line is when that memory came up, I had a little tear in my eye. I had a shudder of shame because I abandoned that job. I did not complete that job. And I never felt good about it. I never faced up to it directly. I never asked for help. I just, in in effect, ran away from that job, abandoned it. I said I would do something, and I didn't do it. The connection for me was instantaneous. This mentor told me he would do something. He didn't do it. So I breathed. I took a breath, scanned my body, and the the worksheet asks me, what do I feel now? I felt calmer. And then I just wrote what I just told you, the memory of that upset. And then I gave myself permission to write a loving goal, which would be five more worksheets process on that lump in my, in my stomach, on that sick feeling in my stomach. And I rolled over and went to bed. And about 1.30 in the morning, I was wide awake. So I pulled out. The app again, once I realized the sick feeling was still in my stomach, and I went through the very same thing. It's the same target. It's the same dynamic that happened. And time, it was um, confusion. So, as I went through, this time when I canceled the goal, I mean, I, I, I didn't even get there. I got down to number two, where it says I willingly go through the physical, mental, and emotional symptoms of healing, and I had another powerful flash memory. And this one brought tears with it. I had to sit up because the tears were running into my ears. This one was a memory of 
my coming home from college, I wasn't even finished with college. It was at the very end of the school year. And the actual day of the end of college had passed, but I had two incompletes. And I, in that last week of college, I basically had a nervous breakdown. So physically, I was okay. But every time I went to work on those two incompletes, the numbers on the page would swirl and I would get confused and I would look at the clock and realize I'd been sitting there for 30 or 40 minutes without doing anything. And it didn't matter how many times I tried. I was not able to get my mind to focus to complete those two projects. So I finally packed it up and went home. And what I thought I was going home to was my father. And my father had been this bright, shining light my entire life. A loving man, a, a, a great counselor of people, a, a good businessman, very bright, one of the smartest people I ever knew, steady as a rock. And so what better than to go home and say, Dad, I'm right here at the crux of, of leaving college and going into the adult world, and I've got this crisis. I need some advice. Dad will know what to do. Go home and talk to Dad. And the memory that flooded into me was that when I got home and I waited until Dad was alone outside and I went outside to talk to Dad and laid out for him, or I was just trying to lay out for him. He was tending roses in his garden and I was standing out there. It was a warm spring day. He was completely unable to tune into what I was saying. My dad, the man who raised me, was simply not there. And it was so confusing. It was such a shock to my system. I still remember. I, I remember the image like it was yesterday. And later that night, I asked my mom, what's going on with my dad? And the bottom line is, my dad was in the middle of a raging, full-blown manic episode. So as I say that, my tears come up again. The man who raised me wasn't there. And this is a crisis. I needed help. I'm facing the decision of walking away from four years of college without a degree or trying to postpone it or put it on hold and go get the, the credits I needed from another institution and have them mailed in. And the guy I'm going to for advice, the man who's always been there, is not there. So the tears come up now. The tears came up then. I just sat up in bed did a little crying, realized the fabulous connection between the emotions I downloaded then and the interpretation I placed on Tuesday's events. Here's one of the biggest projects I've ever undertaken. I'm hiring somebody, expecting him to be that bright, shining light, the mentor who's been there before, who guides me through it, and he's just not there. He's not able to do for me what all of my expectations of him wanted him to do. So I let the tears come, and I did the breathing. And then that the intensity of that emotion at 1.30 in the morning, I, I labeled it as an 8 to get it started. And by the end of the worksheet, it was only, only a 2. I felt more calm. And then I asked to be shown times when I have let people down or failed to be a powerful, positive change agent in, in other people's lives. And I threw that open to the universe, to light, love, Holy Spirit, to continually give me feedback about times when I might be shying away from a commitment to do what I said I would do, or I might be 
on on the cusp of letting somebody down. And then the loving goal that I put in place at the end of this worksheet was to do two more worksheets specifically on this memory with my father. And in enough energy and that almost completely relieved the sick feeling in my stomach so that I could get some more sleep. And this morning, upon waking, I did another because I woke up with the words, I've lost my rudder. And before that was finished coming out of my mouth, I felt like I've lost my rudder and my keel. And if anybody knows anything about boats, the rudder is what I steer with. But if I don't have a keel, if I don't have a center running board or a deep keel in my boat, the rudder is next to useless. So I woke up from some kind of a dream that had me sitting with the thought, I lost my rudder and my keel, that I'm basically just on the water, maybe the ocean, being blown by the wind. And so the thought I used to create this sadness was I can't do this without external guidance. I worked through the worksheet. The goal I had for myself in that worksheet, give me a moment while I dry some tears and get to see clearly again. The goal I set was for me to be able to trust my inner knowing. And when I went through the worksheet process again and did the breathing and reconnected with love and then asked to be shown from something outside my conscious logical mind, what I became aware of, this wasn't a a flash of a big memory. There was no visual image associated with this one as there had been in the past two worksheets. But I became very clearly aware of the thought, I'm afraid that if I trust my inner guidance, I will lose connection to my parents. And in my mind, it was very clear that when I was a child, when I would speak about things I saw, Kenny was just talking about an apparition. If I had had one of those and told my parents, it absolutely was intolerable for them. I know that my very loving, caring parents, both of them were very concrete in their thinking. They were very action-oriented. They were very Western mind-oriented And if I would have said, oh, I just saw Grandpa Hayes, who died when my father was six years old, it would have just freaked them out. If I said, oh, I I have, I know what to do here, that would have freaked them out because I'm just a kid. How am I to know? So in that worksheet, I felt calmer again. My upset went from an eight down to a four. It wasn't two or one, so I knew I had more work to do. And I chose the loving goal to write a letter to my parents about giving up my internal knowing in order to stay connected to them. So I breathed and checked out my upset level and... And got up extra early, got going directly and didn't do some of the things I would normally do in a day. And came to work and decided to write and gave myself time to write. And I just started writing. Now, my mom is still in the body, but on her way out. And my dad died in 1999. 20 years ago. So the benefit to me is 
what I've been trained to in this work is that it doesn't matter that my dad died 20 years ago. This isn't about my dad. This isn't about the interactions between me and my dad. This isn't about the choices my dad made. This isn't about my dad's manic depressive tendencies. This isn't about any action he ever took in his life. It's about the interpretation that I put on those events and the energies that I created and generated the more I poured thought into those events or those thoughts about um, those events and or, as in this case, how the interpretation I placed on that event was energetically connected to something. An event happened on Tuesday in an instant without even being consciously aware of it. I threw an interpretation on it and it energetically resonated something that happened in 1976 and had enough energy resonating in me to give me the feeling that I had swallowed a basketball with rough edges. So my knowledge about how the system works, my active demonstration to myself for the past 15 plus years through the application of these tools gave me the experience that if I sat down and wrote a letter to my dad who's been gone for 20 years and my mother who's no longer able to process these kinds of things with me, I can shift energies in my system. And I did and there's more writing to be done. I probably only wrote for 45 minutes, but I've got a couple pages, and the tears were flowing when I was writing, and I will continue that work. I will go back to the worksheets. I will continue writing whatever feels like it needs to be written to my parents, and I will continue to shift this energy. And that's my offering for today. That's why we teach these kinds of tools. That's how it isn't always Dr. Feelgood, and yet it's always moving me forward. It's always giving me a better chance to see the truth of what is, which is this is just life expressing. As so many of the great teachings tell us, all events are neutral. And they're neutral for me until I throw an interpretation on them. So I'm going to take a break and uh, throw down some water and ask if anybody has a question or a comment. 563-999-3581. Okay, well, here's hoping that we're actually out there in the airwaves. Here's someone with a hand up, area code 828. You're in the air. Hi, Dr. Tim. This is Magda from Missouri. And I just want to quickly say, because I have a feeling other people are going to call too, um, I'm so grateful that you shared your process in such detail. That is the biggest lesson for us listeners, for myself, I'll speak for myself. I just love it. And, um, and my, my heart is full of um, compassion for what you're going through and holding you in a space of love. So continue, and um, you're going to feel so great when you get to the other side of this. You know that, because you're feeling better and better with each worksheet. So thank you again, Dr. Tim. Well, you're very welcome and deserving. Thank you for the call. I'll uh, mute myself and listen, okay? All right. All right. Well, we have probably 10 minutes left before we have to hand the, the reins over to Michael and Jeannie. Here's someone else, area code 770. You're in the air. Thank you. I am Linda in Georgia and very happy. I agree with Jeannie about what a gift it is for you to share your journey. And I have just recently 
uh, looked at a lot of YouTubes last night, my friend referred me one, that relate to these unconscious feelings. And they're saying, people, you need to clear these unconscious feelings as if it was an easy thing to do. And we, you are demonstrating and sharing with us that it isn't that easy, and we need a way to do it. And you're sharing in Chicago and through these means the whole world how one can do it. And I really identified with what you said about poking the pen through the paper when you're trying to do it on your elbow on the bed. You are a good writer. You're, you gave me a whole picture, and I go, wow. That's me, too, and wow, I can do this, too. So I'm just excited right now because I realize that the whole painful separation of wonderful, loving people hating other wonderful, loving people, and I'm standing here and looking at these silly little children and thinking that your plan is probably going to make a difference, and I'm curious how people could, how you could chunk down your big, big plan and delegate it to different groups or something. I I guess I'm curious about your plan, but it's a personal thing, and it, I know how wise it is not to talk about things, but to hold the vision. I would like to support you in holding that vision, and I would please give me a picture of what the vision, once your plan is in place and it's a done deal, what does it look like? What's the result, I guess? May I ask that question? Well, the result is that, that is that many, many more people are exposed to these tools. Mm-hmm. And they have easy, ready access and that they have, whether it's through testimonials or a network of support, they've got the motivation to check them out and that these tools are... in it somehow gotten in front of more and more people that's the vision is that in a rather grassroots way we multiply the efforts using the internet using social media using support groups and it began with um you know 8 years ago when i said i'll i'll donate my time one hour a day, five days a week, to make sure that this, what we now call a podcast, this internet show, has a consistent presentation and is there day in and day out. And it hit me last summer that that's not really getting the results I was looking for. So time to leverage marketing tools and public speaking experts, social media websites, etc. And that's what's been in, in the offing. And it led a, a few months ago to making the Thursday support group available on the internet. So people can either call in and listen or they can call in and have a video I haven't done that yet. Thank you for that. And that's just, you know, what we're hoping is just the beginning. So that's Thank the you very as, much. As that's far a good as answer. Together. Great. I appreciate it, and I look forward to continued uh, report back on what I'm doing, making a difference. Thank you, Linda. Appreciate it. Thank you for the call. You're welcome. So we have six minutes, maybe five. Five six three nine 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 three five eight one. Um, and you have a hand nine one zero. Hey, Doctor Tim. Susan Darnell Ooh. in North Carolina, Wilmington. Oh, I thought that was an Irish accent. Go ahead, Susan. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just want to say congratulations. That was awesome process, and I appreciate your willingness to um, be vulnerable and share that with us and show us what it looks like. Um, 
I'm on the same time schedule as you sleeping. I'm usually uh, waking up doing sheets in the bed. I just got a clipboard. Um, recently just got 100 front and back, so I'm ready to go. I just keep it loaded and ready. Um, but, you know, I, I was thinking I didn't have anything to share, and then as I was hearing the callers, I just thought maybe it might be appropriate just to share a little bit about what I found um, for myself. It, the way I look at myself and the way I look at the world is um, doing this work um, and asking or talking to any other human being that Ruka lives in is asking Holy Spirit for the support that I need. And if it happens to come through the person standing before me or if it happens to come through the person that I overhear talking at the grocery store, however, I try to explain to people um, if I say something that's helpful, I'm grateful. And um, I see that as Holy Spirit coming through me. And I always say, you know, I'm just the straw. So don't get, you know, don't give me or the straw or the straw credit. Just know that every good thing comes from above, or comes from God, or comes from the Spirit within you, uh, the Ruka breath. And that's what I was thinking um, in the coaching world. When anybody asks me, I do my best to say um, the prayer uh, to Ruka to please place my ego aside and allow the Spirit to speak through me and allow me to be of service. So I'm thinking with your with your coach, I have been sitting on the sidelines just admiring you and thinking, that's what I'm going to do and um, or I want to do. And it's so funny because um, when you tell the story, I just have to say that I think that even though that you, you um, as they would say in the South, put your money where your mouth was, you actually invested something that in this world we consider a value, which is the green paper. And you have put it out to the universe. This is what I would like to do. And so I just um, stand as Ruka comes through anyone and everyone to be your coach and to show you the way. And everything you've done so far to me looks like it's beautiful. So um, I just wanted to put that out there to, the, to all of us, that the real coach is Holy Spirit, Ruka. She lives inside of us. She's our breath. And I am so grateful to be on this, and I'm so grateful to be here. Look at me. I'm going to cry. So breathe. just know you're, you're a, a, a true inspiration to us all. I'm grateful that this is on, um, <laughs> well, on the audio. Well, remember, although, you know, okay, so yeah. remember what you just said. I'm just the straw. The inspiration right. is the nourishment that comes through the straw. Amen. It's beautiful. I think what you say, though, Dr. Tim, and I quote you quite often um, in my classes, is it takes the willingness to take my, my bloated nothingness, and I think Dr. Weissick says this too, out of the way and allow myself to put away everything I think I know and come, as A Course in Miracles says, to be totally empty-handed, empty-headed for a Ruka to teach me in each and every moment. And I saw that willingness with you. So I just want to um, namaste, bow to you and to the, the whole team that we're on. Well, uh, I appreciate that. Thank you. And uh way of mastery would talk about it as divine ignorance. You go into it. I like it. Understanding that. I don't really know what anything is or is for. And I don't understand what my brother or sister needs in this moment. And I don't understand all the lessons that may come from a series of events like this and the various interpretations I throw on it that are connected to past traumatic energies I've downloaded. I don't know they're there because I've been running and hiding from them for decades. So it's only in my estimation so far, the only thing I've seen that works well so far for me is to be willing to use the tool, to be willing to say, if I've got a physical or a mental or emotional upset, it's self-created. The energy that's generating that is inside me. It didn't come from the outside, and the solution can't come from the outside. So the only reasonable thing for me to do is 
keep my breath moving. Absolutely. I support you in that. I'll just put it out to anybody who's listening. I'm in uh, doing a breath session on Sunday here in Wilmington. So for the ones who haven't heard, maybe they'll uh, get in contact with me and come and, and breathe with us. All right. And I'll remind people that tonight is a Thursday. So that means tonight from 630 to 9 Central Time, there's another Mind Shifter support group that's available through Zoom. And you can find out about that at mindshifters-academy.org, O-R-G. Click on the support groups tab. All the information is there. And you can um, also listen to some of those recordings from the archives at, at ch, the number four, cs.com on the audio page there. And before I hang up so Michael Rice can tap in, I will just remind us all to try and remember that we come from this energy we call love. We're made of we call love. We are this stuff we call love, the energy of creation. Everything else is false. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. Thank you, everyone. Thank Jeannie, you, take Dr. it away. Tim. All right. Thank you so much. And so while Michael's calling in, I will go ahead and, and uh, announce that you can go to our website, whyagain.org, click on the bullseye, or start here, and you can download worksheets. And uh, there is, for those who have registered for an intensive and are going to be doing the Pay It Forward program with Julie, the worksheet that she uses in the Pay It Forward program is also now on the website. And so you can download that one and you'll be up to speed with her when you're working with her. If you click on schedules on our website, you'll see that Food Fund Forgiveness, we're asking everybody to arrive on May the 30th. And the 16 days begin May the 31st. And then we'll have a couple of days off. And there's a, um, the 16 days ends on June the 15th. There's a couple of days off. And then on Thursday, June the 20th, will be a three-day, and it's three full days, of personal code evaluation training. And the prerequisite to learn how to use that personal code is that you've either attended teacher's training or laws of living or that you're registered to attend it. So some people will be attending that that are then going to continue on and do the nine-day why and the nine-day teacher's training. But that is a prerequisite for that. And you ask what's personal code evaluation, it is... 162 questions and it's on the computer and you just click mostly true, mostly false and it gives us the results of where your greatest challenges are. There's 10 areas that it scores and that would be in like stress management, love of self, love of others, nutrition, digestion, toxicity, love for laws of living, and then there's 10 areas. And so it tells us where your greater challenges are so that we can offer assignments to work in those areas. Then you take the evaluation again at the end of the intensive, and you can see where, if you've done your work, that you've improved. And then following the three-day is a nine-day why, and that goes from June the 23rd to July the 1st. And then that ends on the morning of July 1st. And the evening of July 1st begins teacher's training. And that's a nine-day. And looks like the group for all of those is really building. And it should be an, an awesome time. And I hold the space. I know that Michael will do absolutely fine. I'm not going to be with him this year. I'm going to stay here in Bristol and help my dad. And so... Um, we just hold the space, and, and it will be fabulous. And he is with us now, so welcome, Michael. Thank you, dear heart, and thank you, everybody. We're getting the transition down from Tim's show to our show. It's sweet to uh, have that first hour going, and next Tuesday, remember, Tim will have a special guest. And that's awesome. Tim, are you with us still? He is not. Oh, okay. Cool. Well, welcome, everybody. 
Ari. Delighted that you're with us. As we... Yes, he is. Hold on. I'll turn his oh. microphone on. <laughs> he got lost among all the numbers, but yes, he's with us. Oh, there are cool. a few people. Well, there are a few people with their hands up. Well, maybe you could take just a moment and tell us, you know, if there's anybody who wasn't on your segment of the show that uh, perhaps will be as joining us, uh, that uh, might want to hear about your special guest next Tuesday. I'm excited. Well, next Tuesday, um, from 11 to 1, uh, 11 to noon Central, we'll interview Guy Finley about his new book, Relationship Magic. And as I said in the original introduction to this, his Relationship Magic book is perfectly in alignment with Healing Through Relationships, the lecture Dr. Rice gives, and that the tools in that video and codependence to interdependence the lecture Dr. Rice gives which is available for sale at his whyagain.org and the tools in that lecture so um, I don't know whether or not this particular book has made it to the bestseller list but Guy has had books on the bestseller list he is a phenomenal writer, presenter we've used a number of his talks in our support groups and his work is entirely compatible with all of the work we're, we're doing so I look forward to that I'm going to try and give him the hour to educate people about his book and um, if it works well maybe it'll be a, an intro to having him back on the show when he's not just promoting a book and there's more back and forth, but everything I've ever read, listened to, I've bought his CDs, read his books, is perfectly in alignment with the work we do in in the Why Again and the Mind Shifters Internet Show, etc. Sweet. Well, I've listened to some of his work. We've been out and met him at his center out west, and uh, yes, everything's so compatible. And the thing I really love about him is his storytelling. He is just an awesome storyteller. It's a fabulous skill that he has, and the way he weaves stories into how he teaches is pretty awesome. So thank you for doing that, and thank you for grasping that first hour and sharing it with people. And we're honored and delighted to have you on the team and to be on your team. And together we are moving this forward on a global scale. So pretty sweet. Thank you. How powerful is Cox Internet? Powerful enough to let your band members invade. 